Great news, reviews, reviews, and voices are shifted at all. You say this life now by choice. Sure. So you can choose success you want, so you can raise up your voice on. بدلانا لين عهدا علينا أسود العرين نمضي أماما أبدلانا لين حتى إذا أبداً لنا النحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله جند الله جند الله جند الله جند الله ولا بد يوم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a program called to Islam. The program will come to you from AYV television every Friday, 5 to 6 p.m. This is a program where they teach you about Islam, where they bring you very close to Allah. The program where they tell you what you need for now. The program where they guide you, where they give you the best guidance where you need. And me, where they come with this program to you, I name Muhammad Mujtaba Ba. And I don't go do this program alone. I do with one of Sierra Leone's biggest scholars. We be say this somebody, na somebody who study in Medina University, na the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He studied there for about 18 years. We that qualify and forget a PhD degree on Islamic Aqida. So a very big scholar we do with you today, and the national coordinator for the Islamic Action Group, Islag. And at the same time, I'm the deputy chief imam of Jamiatul Haq, Furabe. The man I'm the talk of now, Dr. Ahmad Ramadan Jalwa. Dr. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the television. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Muhammad Mujtaba Ba, and assalamu alaikum to all the viewers and with the VV from AYV TV. Alhamdulillah, this is a big opportunity for me and for we all. We host this kind of scholar, and inshallah, today we go drive to a very interesting topic where it's very relevant to me in your life. But before we go there, we will ask we check for the general overview on Islam and in presence one at the AYV television. Doctor, what will be your first message to the people? Well, I will say Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wala wa ba'du. Uh, let me start for congratulate uh, the AYV TV station for operate uh, in this week country also, and also for the fact that they consider Islam for be one of uh, the programs them where they bring out to we people them. They don't make any mistake with that. Uh, we all know say we Muslims them um, they plenty in the country and we country in a religious country and we all need guidance and we all need for learn and get education so that we're gonna exactly. Uh, what we for do and what we not supposed to do and uh, Islam language with that. So if um, the AYB TV station get a program like this, uh, nature, we tell the one they were responsible for this station as a plenty thank you. And we tell yourself thank you where they host various checks them on this program. Well today now Friday now a very big day for we the Muslims them all over the world and uh, they will for congratulate yourself. Now, a day where we for come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the opportunity, a day for we, for lay, we call Almighty Allah, the Almighty Allah will answer we more this particular day. Okay, that's now the brief intro from Dr. Ahmad Ramadan Jallo. And inshallah, today we will discuss one very important topic, as we used to do every Friday. We will treat various topics, then we will see a very necessary in our own life. And today's topic is one of high importance because it's a topic with me and you very much in need of. We can live without it as a Muslim, so we thought it wise for bring them up to now. And inshallah, this topic will be about Iman. We use for you this word Iman, Iman, Iman. So inshallah, today we do know what is Iman and how the role where Iman gets for playing a man in your life. But since you get to school and are in the best person for telling you what is Iman, so, Doctor, what is Iman? Well, we once again, let's tell you, thank you for choosing this kind of a topic. Um, 
you don't choose, of course, as you rightly say, one of the best topics. Them, uh, the iman, now we faith. The iman, now we believe. The iman, now what you make me a you Muslim. The iman, the line of demarcation between the kafir and the Muslim. The iman, now what you be to say, you realize, now your heart, the belief, where you say your heart about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word we go talk in your mouth, then the action we go forward through whatever belief you don't get in your heart. The Iman and the general name we the inside the Holy Quran for the Muslim faith itself. But it carry other beautiful uh, uh, meanings them at the same time or other names them. For example, if we say Aqidah, and the same thing we mean. If we say Tawheed, and the same thing we mean. If we say Usulu Sunnah or Usulu Deen. That is the fundamental aspect of the deen, that the same thing you mean. If we say the sharia, that the same thing you mean. If we say as-sunnah, that the same thing you mean. But the word iman, na in more the inside the Holy Quran, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the word done the way Jibreel being used way come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you ask me what in the iman. Generally when we can talk about uh, any terminology inside Islam, you can find for no define them in two forms. One, look at the literal meaning, that is the, uh, the language context itself of the word Iman. Then we look how the Sharia itself defines the word Iman. Coming to the language context, for lay, we understand the word Iman, the scholars then say it can come from in four things then. They all they boil down to almost the same thing. Can come from in a tasdik. A tasdik simply mean for belief. If somebody tell you something, you say, I don't believe what you say. What they tell we about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say we don't believe about, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What they tell we about the angels, we say we don't believe. They tell we about things they will hide, we say we don't believe. This then call them a tasdik. The iman, again, it can come from mean uh, a thicker confidence. Because belief. It the move with confidence. You get to get confidence in whatever you believe in. The iman again it can, it can come from mean al amnu wal istikrar wa tumanina. It can come from mean uh, 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 security because the iman as if it can for can secure you, secure you and provide for you a protective cover against what will cause harm to you and also provide for you what will make life better for you. That na iman what you can do according to the literal and the linguistic meaning of the word Iman. The another meaning of the word Iman is Al-Iqrar, wal istikrar This is one of the meanings that plenty of scholars accept. For say, now one of the closest meaning of the word Iman inside the Arabic language. The word Iqrar simply means for agree, for confess. It defined for say, this particular meaning, a move a higher stage than the original meaning same. When you say, I don't confess. It simply means say I don't accept. It simply means to say I don't believe. It simply means to say I don't affirm. I don't confirm. For say, not other God nor for worship except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's not just an example anyway, because and the literal meaning now we look at talking about iman inside Arabic language. Coming to the meaning of the word iman inside uh, the definition of uh, the scholars of Islam. The definition of the scholars of Islam then define Iman for say na qawlun bil lisani wa atiqadun bil janani wa amalun bil arkan. Then define for let it mean three things we they occupy three sides in everybody. A wonderful uh, brother um, um, uh, Mushtaba for let the viewers them understand this. Iman they say na qawlun bil lisan. They say a word where you go talk with your mouth. Of course, the word lisan means the tongue, because the tongue is one of the, uh, the great organs they were responsible for speech itself. That no word where you could talk. Then, the belief will register in your heart, and then say, Itaqadun bil janan. And say, Wa amalun bil arkan, or wa amalun bil jawari, na action, where you could, um, you could do with your body, with the different parts of your body. So, na three things then. Na word, na belief, and action. Then, then three things said they come from three areas then. From your mouth, the words. Although even the heart self get word, where they talk, the scholars will say at tastic, for accept something that na the, na the word of the heart itself. Then 
the heart, when at the center, when at the main base of the iman itself, that from there it the start, that they, it they build up, just like how you go sow a seed in the ground, that they, the iman they start as a seed, then it grow inside the heart as a tree, then it spread over all the body as the branches of the tree, then you will get the leaves and the fruits and when they come out of them, we na in na the actual thing we will search out for from this iman. The iman na wonderful something. Na something will be to say um, na word, na action, na belief. If you get the correct guidance, it will lead you to the best of what you want in the life of this world and the life of the hereafter. But if you get slight misguidance, it can cause problem because it get to do with the fit. That then they lead me to the other word we they call Akida. Akida simply means to say what in your heart don't tie upon. And an Akida. What in your heart don't tie upon, what you don't build upon. That Akida they many times it they control you, your actions. What pe many people like almost everybody it they act based upon what you believe in. If you meet somebody, it gets juju. Na house when any two one they talk to, na because you don't believe na heart say that you do you get some kind of impact in life. So now that make it very important for they to get control over the person in Akida, the person in Iman. Now that make all the prophets say when they come. The all the very first thing where they start with for build up this part. And guide them towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And that's what if it happen. Every human being, we na a Muslim. The very first thing we for start and for build up your iman, build up your aqidah, let it be the word way you talk, the belief way they register in your heart, and the action same way they come in your body. This word for saying a word and actions, it can, be, it can look general somehow. And that makes the scholars and say, the word itself, now that word where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, the belief and the word where Allah wants, the action and the word where Allah wants. Allah not left you for let you just talk what you want. For they just believe what you want. It directs you to the kind of beliefs what you want for that you get. It directs you to the kind of words so for the talk, way for the reflect the belief within your heart. It directs you to the kind of action where this action only demonstrate what in the your heart and what in don't come out of your tongue. So you see how Iman itself na some kind of a complex itself, na a whole complex, na a whole institution, na a very big house. Everything that inside it, it enter. The scholars and say the words and what you will talk, then the beliefs them they say the day, then get then get words, then get actions, all of them I believe. The fear and inside it enter now and the heart, the sincerity and inside it they come, the hope and inside it they come, and so many other actions say with the register and the heart. The mouth, the dhikr, for say la ilaha illallah, all of this na iman, the actions. The worships them all, the jihad, the prayer, the zakat, the fasting, all of this, they make up Iman itself. So, uh, Brother uh, Mujtaba, if we, if we people really want to understand Iman, then for broaden the view, look at them as a very big something, not to something very small where you just feel to sin. If I go pray in a mosque, and don't demonstrate me Iman. The Iman is big and big and big past that, brother, whichever. Mm, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. When a scholar is speak, you will really not say a scholar. But Alhamdulillah, for a moment, he don't explain to me. I mean, we will explain that again. But there are three key things. Iman is talk, believe, and action. Am I right, sir? Of course. Now, the main thing and then the, for the Iman. Mm -hmm. The talk, the believe, and the action. Okay. And all for go. One elephant company? No, of course. Okay. So, this is a man. You don't see how useful. And doctor mm -hmm. explain to you how complex it is. But no matter how, we need for diving to her. And no, whatever. This is a man, doctor. He gets pillars with the inner. Of course, the iman gets pillars, then with the inner, where they make for level understand more. In fact, when you come to the commander of what you need for believe in, and that they lead me to the pillars. But before I come to that, when we check the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we found out for say, na Isaac tell you in Iman. Pan two wonderful hadith them. One of the hadith them, the famous hadith we normally call as hadith show about the Iman. The hadith they talk about the branches of the Iman. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell we say, he say, Al Imanu bidun 
وسبعون أو بدء وستون شعبة أعلاها قول لا إله إلا الله وأدناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق والحياء شعبة من الإيمان ودا مجتبى مديا في وزدم This hadith, a famous hadith we didn't say Bukhari and Muslim It actually defined the concept of Iman One whole one The Prophet said some tell me for say The Iman has 70 something portions Or 60 something portions in It is the way it enter upon Then it tell me say the highest of them Now the call of la ilaha illallah The lowest of them Now for remove some problem on the road You meet something on the road When a problem that affect people Let me remove them then he mentioned, say, the haya for shame and a part of Iman. Now, one of them portions say, I want for, um, close, let me, let me view as them. Let me all closely look at this particular hadith. This hadith here, I guess so many things they would extract out of them. With all of them, they help me and you for understand the concept of Iman better. Firstly, the Iman, the hadith they tell me, say, the Iman has several branches. For let me, you know, say, not a one great aspect no more Iman. It enter upon so many things then. That smile say for you will smile to pass in the Iman. You know, that give you will give somebody water for drink, na Iman. It even reach to the characters them, the, the, the behavior of we the Muslims. You know, all of them are part of Iman. So that make you see, if we mention also for remove something in the road, where they affect people then. This is a part of characters. This is a part of for lay, you should have to show your responsibility. No. You know, all of them are part of faith itself, the part of Iman. Not talking about the fundamental aspects then, we are in the pillars of Islam, they enter inside the prayer, the zakat. They were in the higher areas of Iman. Okay, now that mm. makes, he mentioned the highest of them, one of the Tawheed. That means this hadith is showing you for say, the highest of faith, one of the Tawheed. Yes, for believe, for accept, for confess, for demonstrate. Now you like for say, nobody know the way fit for worship. Nothing know the way deserve for worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one grain. Just like how in one grain create you, in one grain provide for you, in one grain create this entire universe, na in na the only one we deserve for let you turn to Ram in form of worship. Whether na prayer now, whether na fear now, whether na love love now, whether na hope, whether na rely, whether na question, whether na ask you the ask them. All of that, if for direct them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, forget nothing else we believe from. If you get anything, you believe from Juju, you believe for say that person, they benefit me, you believe for Ukraine and graveyard, that one, did, you, don't, you don't already damage the very big pillar of the Iman, where the Tawheed. So this hadith, they tell me that one day. This hadith, again, they tell me directly for say, the Iman, na word, na action, and na belief. Because it mentions, say, Qawdu la ilaha, say the word, la ilaha illallah. For sure, we say the word. Then he mentioned again, say, well, haya or show about the iman. The haya for shame, scholars they agree, say the shame, even though some two they come out from the body, but not from the heart they come out. And then in center, in base that one day, inside the heart itself. Then again, he mentioned some two very interesting. He say, Allah, the highest of them, they say, Adanaha, he say, the lowest of them. This is the teacher for say, the iman, it is very. It increase, it is decrease. And the scholars they make it very clear. That the iman it increase with the worship and the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it decrease when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we commit sins. Okay. okay, that's again a very big chapter. How it happen, how the iman they increase, how it decrease. That one in a very b a big chapter where scholars that write several books and only for explain to me how the iman they increase, how it decrease. Now coming to the question we ask about the pillars of the Iman or the components of the Iman itself. That one they come from one hadith way na Jibri alayhi salam. Now all men sala sent who come teach the Prophet and the entire Ummah Muslima what in the Iman. Jibril once upon a time the how the hadith tell me he come in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the Sahaba and Sidon and Medina and the mosque. The all Sidon he come in the form of human being. He sit down with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Number no Sabian he come he wear white clothes. The white, the so shine panam. You know, they see panam any sign like seeing somebody come from far distance, you know. He can't see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ask him a question. He say, Ya Rasulullah, he say, Akhbir me mal Islam. He say, you messenger of Allah, tell me what in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam defined Islam to Ram with the five pillars of Islam only, you know, and tashad an la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, wa tuqimu salat, wa tuqtu zakat, wa tasumu ramadan, wa tahujjul bayt. The five pillars of Islam we all know, with the first one and the Tawheed, the second one and the prayer, then the third one and the zakat, 
Then you fast in the month of Ramadan, therefore perform Hajj. Then five pillars there. Now the Prophet defined for be Islam from this hadith. Then after that, when he talked this, I want to define them. Then he and say, he said, he said, Sadak, you see, you don't talk true. Everybody's surprised. How come this man they come, the infiltration of the for Kalan? How come this man they ask questions, then they confirm, say, not true, the Prophet talk? Okay. So, secondly, then ask an out in the Iman. When he ask out in the Iman, and they tell the Prophet, define the Iman with the pillars of Iman, we you ask me for about now. The Prophet make it very clear. He say, Al Imanu an tu mina billah. Say the Iman for they believe in Allah. Wa malaikatihi for believe in the angels. Wa kutubihi for believe in the books. Wa rusulihi for believe in all the prophets. And we don't come. All of them. Then, wa liyawmil akhir for believe in the last day. The yawmil akhir. Wa al qadari khayrihi wa sharrihi for believe in the destiny. The good one and the bad one. Then, six items say, yeah, that they make up. The iman itself, and then the one they will make up the iman. Now, each one of them, one they are then six, one they are a lot. They have for talk about them. If we come for the first, to the first one, al iman will be left for believing in Allah subhanahu wa taala. What it simply mean? For believe in the existence of Allah. Anybody they will go doubt the existence of Allah. No. Huh? Anybody they? We may tell ask that question the Holy Quran. He say, "Afillahi shakun faatiris samawati wal al." Anybody they will get the doubt. About the existence of Allah, the originator of the sky and the ground. Everything you look so, we surround you, you deceive upon and which lead you to the creator of that particular thing. Coming to yourself, you the human being, you deceive by yourself. What in the show, say indeed there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that make this the one of the areas them way they have the lepers in Dinam, even the, the disbelievers them, even the pagans them, even the one the way the talk say. God know the in the token of the mouth, but inside the heart, it's not possible for the token. Because then they deny themselves, then they deny themselves in your existence. Then they deny what in surround in the world. Then they see what in they happen. Day they come, night they come, rain they come. Nobody no one they claim that the world is not responsible for all of these actions. Right? And that's what I'm not responsible for all of that. And they make it clear to me the only Quran. So this is not one of uh, uh, the, the, the components of the iman itself we for believe in then for believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for say for believe in the three aspects of tawhid for believe in the oneness of in creation the fact that the in one green create this world then the only king and they control the affairs of everything so therefore then deserve the worship for believe in in names and in attributes then for believe for say in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the only one who for turn to worship him that the just the area of Al Iman will be I say that one in a morning, a special study you wish until you go study for a whole year. Because several books in the wouldn't just write only write about just that part there. Especially with some of them can um, can also try for treat some people then we don't somehow deviate in that particular aspect they we get for do with the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There comes the belief in angels. For belief for say Almighty Allah get a special creation where it creates where they call angels then. The angels say we need to see them with three eyes, but Allah tell me about them and he tell me say then the angels say we the obey them, they know they ever disobey them, then the angels say we they serve them at all times, and the angels say we get responsibilities then. You get Jibril when they're responsible for bringing the revolution to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You get the Kiram and Katibin, you get the angels say we write to be action, say what they do. You get angels say we then describe for say then they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they mean the pap then they dip and suff. Several descriptions they wouldn't talk about the angels and we all of that. We as Muslims will believe in that. They will believe in all the books and we don't come. They will believe in all the prophets. And this I want to emphasize that we Muslims we believe in all the messengers, them. All of them. The scholars they make it clear for say if you believe in all the angels, I mean I'm sorry, if you believe in all the prophets, but you not believe in Isa, Jesus Christ, you know to Muslim. If you believe in all the prophets, you not believe in Musa, Moses, you know to Muslim. If you believe in all the prophets, you don't know, believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then you know to a believer. So the true believer and the believer will believe in all the messengers. Them we don't come. Then for believe again in the hereafter. For say he get for come and he start with the death. Each and everyone for of we they die. And when he die, that and the, and the starting of the next world for the, that particular person day, it is starting in the grave, the Yom al Qiyamati, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for raise everybody who don't die, each and every person get for go face their account. All of that will believe in everything and tell we about what in get for happen that in the way instead of being a long story. 
Then for believe in the destiny, the good one, and the bad one. For believe, say whatever mystery, in me for mystery, whatever mystery, in me for mystery, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get the perfect knowledge of everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write everything that happened in this world before he created this world 50,000 years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in willpower and through him everything that happened. Whatever you wish for do, whatever you want for do, if Allah no grief for lay be, it did not happen at all. Not to what you wish, and what you Allah Almighty Allah wish. Then for believe for see the actions of honor Almighty Allah Creator. Now this now the four pillars of destiny itself. So this now it make up the components of the Iman in brief. But as I say, each and every one of them one they are so I mean the whole ocean. Okay. The program where they watch na call to Islam where they come on the AYV television with me now Dr. Ahmad Ramadan Jallo, one of we scholars them na this country. And it just don't highlight for the pillars into which a man is divided into. It tell you about the belief in Allah, the belief in the messengers, the books, the prophets, the angels and destiny. It tell you say all lens here you for believe with an iota of no doubt. You for believe in them all. Emphasize on the prophet. If you believe all other prophets, you left one, then you are not a Muslim. Same comes to the books, as well as the angels, destiny, everywhere. So we'll go out to a very short break and we'll come back. You go join me inside the program again, inshallah, when I call to Islam. The greatest reason for weakness of Iman. The greatest reason for weakness of Iman is being detached from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Prophet This is number one. This will kill you every single time. If you are detached from the Book of Allah, meaning you don't read it, you don't ponder upon its meanings, you don't memorize it, you don't try to implement it in your life, then you cannot be wondering why your Iman is weak. Because you have no attachment to Allah. The Prophet said, I leave behind with me two, behind me two things. If you hold to them, you will never go astray. The first of them is the book of Allah, which is like a rope. One end of it with Allah Azza wa Jal and the other end of it in your hands. If you let go of that rope, then you lose your connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. You have to continue to keep that connection with the book of Allah. The only way we know Allah is by that which He has revealed to us about Himself. And where else are you going to find that which Allah has revealed to us about Himself other than in His Word? His word. Other than in His Word. This is the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is as close as you're going to get to being near to Allah in this life. is through your connection to Allah through His Book. Because even in our Salah, people say, yeah, our Salah is our connection with Allah. Is there any Salah that is valid without the Book of Allah in it? Is there any salah that is valid without the book of Allah being in it? So you can't tell me that salah is the only connection you have with Allah because if you don't have the book, then you don't have the salah. So the book of Allah Azza wa Jal is the most important thing. It is primary. It is primary. I can't stress the importance enough that if you don't pick up the Quran at least once a day, in the morning or in the evening or any time, and at least thumb through something and try to understand it, then you have lost a severe connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. You've lost it. And if you just read the Arabi, MashaAllah, may Allah reward you with the hasanat of every single letter you read. But if you don't understand it, what is it going to do for you? You don't know what Allah is even telling you. You are saying something that Allah is commanding you and you don't even understand it. It's like you sitting here speaking, if I gave this language in, in, in a language that I made up, you wouldn't benefit from it and I wouldn't know what I'm saying. You get hasanat through its recitation and you get benefit through its understanding. And therefore you must have your connection with Allah through His book and you must have connection to the Sunnah of the Prophet These two things are mandatory. Losing these will cause you to have weakness of Iman. Wallahi, every time. The, farther you, the longer you stay away from the book of Allah, the more you will find your Iman draining. Because the book of Allah is like gasoline in the car, like the petrol you put in the car. If you don't put any petrol in the car, what's going to happen? It's eventually going to be stuck in the middle of the road. You're not going to be able to go anywhere else. The same without putting the, the, the heart filled with the remembrance of Allah Azza wa through His Word. You will find a heart that becomes empty. Empty of any energy whatsoever to please Allah. What it will have energy for is to disobey Allah Azza wa Because shaitan will be the one filling it up at that point. With all the doubts and the masiyah and things of this nature. One thing, one of the things that causes weakness of Iman 
is staying away from an iman nourishing environment for too long. For too long. Staying away from an environment that will nourish your iman for too long will cause you to fall into sin. sin. Will cause you to fall into sin. sin. Because sin was one of the things that weakened the iman. the iman. Like for instance, if you're sitting in the house of Allah Azawajal, how many times do you think about sinning? Very little. Very little. If you're sitting in the house of Allah Azawajal, and the Quran is being recited, the dhikrs, uh, the, the circles of, uh, of remembering Allah is going on, then your, your mind is not thinking about disobeying Allah. You're almost in Jannah, almost in some instances. But the moment you go home and you start kicking it on Facebook and on, on your, your, on, your on Xbox Live or PS3 network, kicking footy around and things of this nature, what happens? You start thinking about disobeying Allah. Shaitan comes to you and you start getting into that mode and that environment. And the longer you stay away from the environment that nourishes Iman, the weaker you will become. Keeping away from righteous companions causes weakness of Iman. Keeping away from people who remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet said, be careful of who you take as your companion. Because every man has the deen of his companion. The person you spend the most time with is someone who does not remember Allah Azza wa Jal, does not remember Allah the way you should remember Allah, then guess what? Your Iman is going to suffer because of that, whether it's now or later on down the road. Because one thing I do know, in this life, either you're giving da'wah or you're getting da'wah. You should either try to bring your companion closer to you, or if you feel that you're too weak to do so, separate that company. company. Separate that company for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, and let somebody else come and try to nourish that relationship. Because if not, you're both going to get dragged into the ditch. Preoccupation with dunya causes du'a for iman. It causes the weakness of iman and forgetfulness of akhirah. Forgetfulness of akhirah. Being unmindful of akhirah, meaning the next life, and all you are preoccupied with is this life, will cause your iman to become weak. Will cause your iman to become weak. Why? Because this dunya doesn't do anything but suck the life out of Iman. It will suck your Iman out like nothing else. It will. It doesn't mean that we cannot have anything from this dunya and have Iman. No. But it must be in some balance. رَبَّنَ أَتِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَ أَذَابِ النَّارِ We ask Allah for the good of the life and the next, but upon that we ask for Allah to save us from the punishment of the next life. The Prophet said, He is doomed who is the slave of the dinar and the dihram. That the person who is the slave of money is doomed. is doomed. They're doomed. If all you do is a slave to the job, you're a slave to the paycheck. Check. Every week you're a slave to this check. Then you're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. That doesn't mean you don't need to go out and work. You must work. But work is ibadah. You need to understand that your work is an ibadah in and of itself. If you rely on Allah, He will never disappoint you. Allah never disappoints those who rely upon Him. He said it in His book. Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad I don't break my promise. If you keep your word to Allah, you will find a Rabb who keeps his word to you more than you can ever imagine. More than you can ever imagine. And you'll never worry again. You'll learn not to worry. Worry for what? Worry about what? Oh, everything's falling down around us. Well then Allah is tearing it down so He can build something better. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. We thank Allah for that. If we have a little bit of hardship in between, you're not going to get to Jannah with an easy life. Jannah is surrounded by hardship and some of us think that we can catapult ourselves over the hardship and land directly in the middle of Jannah. It doesn't work like that. You need to go through the hardship to get there. One thing we need to understand about Iman before I tell you how to fix Iman is you need to understand the Prophet ﷺ said, Faith wears out in the heart the same way clothes wear out. That Iman wears out in the heart the same way that if you wear clothes they wear out. They constantly need to be cleaned and cleaned and renewed and you need to put on new ones. It constantly needs to renew. So he said, ask Allah to renew your heart. Renew your heart, your heart. Ya qalbi ala he said, Allah, he said, the Prophet والسلام, told people, ask Allah to renew your heart. your heart. We also need to understand that it is part of our aqeedah that Iman rises and falls. You have to understand that or you're going to always think that you're a hypocrite. And if you do always think you're a hypocrite, it's a sign of Iman as well. It's a sign of Iman. Don't always beat yourself up because you think you have become a hypocrite. The thing we need to try to fix though, is that it doesn't fall to the point to where we fall into sin. It's like a muscle. We have to learn that Iman is a muscle. It is a muscle. If I go to the gym, when I pick up the, the 50 pound weight first, and just start chucking that thing over my head, if I'd never worked out before, no man, I'm going to rip every muscle in my body. That's it. I'm, that's going to be the last workout I'll probably do for at least a month. I'm going to tear every ligament and tendon if I can even get the things above my head. And then I'm not going to work out anymore. I'm going to say that's too much. too much. Right? Correct? No, you start with the little weights, correct? And then when those get easier, now you go to the other one. Because what happens is you build something called muscle memory. So that the muscles remember these movements and they get stronger. 
But if you stop working on those muscles, what happens? They go straight back downhill. Iman is a muscle that must be worked on. But if you want to work on your Iman, you can't start by saying, okay, I'm going to fix my Iman by reading one juz a day. I'm going to pray uh, uh, 20 ra'ka of, 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 of Qiyam al-Layl. You know, I'm going to read 50 ahadith, this, that, and the third. Because why? Because why? Because You're not going to be able to keep up that regimen. That regimen, that regimen. I'm going to fast every other day, the fast of Dawood. You're going to put it all in at once. You're going to go from being a marginal Muslim to a super Muslim in one day. It doesn't work like that. You're going to jump off the building thinking you're Superman. You're going to splat right on the ground. You need to work at it slowly. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome again to the program. When I call to Islam, we come to you on your vital vision. Me we carry this program to you, Muhammad Mujtababa, and I dare you a very big scholar, when I Dr. Ahmad Ramadan Jabba. And the topic we don't discuss today, we will discuss now about Iman. Iman, it will deal with your faith. You can't go on from it. And Dr. Do explained to you, Iman, in then we talk, we believe, and we actions. Then three are the go with the Iman. And it don't highlights for the pillars into which Iman is divided into. And we don't talk on them pillars then there. And now, doctor, this Iman, it gets benefits. Of course, again, it gets something contrary. Because we believe, say, certain things they've been at the wall now. The people, they do certain things. With the name of Iman, I say now the Iman made they do certain things like terrorist attacks. But what are the benefits then of Iman? One of the biggest benefits of Iman is that Iman it will provide for your protection. It will protect you. It will guide you towards the right faith where you supposed to forget. It will fortify you against the bad bad beliefs then because the Iman itself, how you get, how you get them, how you understand them, you don't understand them from how the Prophet said Allah Sallam sure. teaching to your companions, how impart pan, how impart an into them. And that make whatever actions you can do today. Ask yourself, this action has been the part of the Iman of the Sahaba they've been the Prophet during the Prophet's own time. Today people then they go and bomb people them, kidnap women them in the name of Islam. This Prophet in Sahaba they mean they do that. No. So that don't teach you for say that not to Iman. So the Iman where you understand them properly it will fortify you, it will it 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 actually protect you against the evil ideologies they are. That makes a big scholar write a special book on that. How the Iman they fortify you against them call the Afkar al Haddaman, them destructive ideologies they with it today in the world. Then the Iman again it is sabati you, it is strengthen you, it is make lay you firm. Al Matala say you thabitu Allahu Ladina Amanu Bil Kawli Thabiti Fil hayati dunya fil akhira. Almighty Allah say it is strengthen. The one they will be to see them believe, that is the one they will get iman, it is strengthen them with the word of tawheed. With the same iman itself. It strengthen, strengthen them with this word, and the life of this world, and the life of this hereafter. And the life of this world, they will get total guidance, and then they go astray. The life of the hereafter, no poilat, no grief, no sorrow. Now good testimony will meet them there. The Iman is a healthy for you to live a pleasant life, a happy life. Quran makes it very clear to me. Almighty Allah says, Ban amila swalihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fa la nuhiyanna hu hayatan tanyiba. He says, anybody will do good work. Whether I'm a man or whether I'm a woman, as long as you're a believer, you get Iman with you, Allah says, will you make you live a pleasant life, a beautiful life. Iman will provide security from all what you're afraid. Iman, it is secure you from all which you're afraid. If you person is afraid, which man is afraid, more man is afraid, um, 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 of people, certain people of authority, and because you don't get Iman, it. When you get Iman, you know, say, the way we're the overall protector, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever, you know, decree for them, meet you, you know, they meet you, we get such kind of a belief, you know, they're not really afraid. I'm going to tell say, Alladheena amanu, wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi dhulm, ulaika lahumul amnu wa hum muhtadun. The one they will get Iman, then they don't mix up the Iman with Shirk, then it lead to the other question we ask now, what will destroy the Iman? Why many people them, then are Muslims, but at the same time, 
Lots of problems happen to them. Plenty of difficulties happen to them. They go back to the Iman. If the Iman correct, Wallahi, they never get a problem. In life of this world, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that they will the Quran. So anybody who gets belief, you know, mix them up with shirk, that person need to get security and they get guidance. The Iman, uh, the benefits are plenty. But one of the biggest benefits we get, now what you mean you want from the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it very clear to me. He says, وَمَا يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّوَالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَيْكِ يَدُكُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ Anybody be to say he do righteous work, man or woman, then in a believer, that person day is there amongst the one with the entrance of paradise. Iman then they make level get goodness. Honestly, you a sober believer will get iman with you. Goodness they meet you. Almighty Allah say, "Walla anna ahl al qur'a aman wa taqaw la fatahna alayhi barakati min al sama'i wal ard." You see, the people of the town, they may believe, then get iman, then they fear Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah they open for them the goodness from the sky and the ground. So what do we want? With Iman, we are wealthy people. With Iman, we are well protected. With Iman, we get guidance. With Iman, we get everything we want. Not just this world, also again in the next world. So the benefits are plenty about our mushtaba. So if you need security, you want to be steadfast, you want to live a very happy life. And finally, if you need paradise, you Iman, you not get for Jokwitan, you need for upgrade. But doctor, how somebody can upgrade Islam? <laughs> Iman, sorry. For upgrade your iman, several things in the world is called and talk about how you for upgrade your iman. Generally, not the worships and the obedience. You upgrade your iman when you upkeep, you worship them. That is your prayer. Pray to the time. You need to delay your prayer. With Ramadan coming, you the fast. You the hajj, you get a chance for go perform hajj. You the pull zakat, you will get a chance for do that. Then one day, you learn the components of the iman. You the make dhikr all the time. Almighty Allah say, Allah be dhikr, la ta'tuma in al the dhikrullah na in the give tranquility to the heart itself. So then one day, anyhow, they're strong for you, and so you iman they upgrade. Okay. When you pray are strong, you iman they go up. When you ha you, 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 you dhikr is strong, you iman they go up. Then it include inside panam, the abstain with the abstain from the sin the way haram. Because you need for abstain. For any day where you do haram, you iman they for them. They drop calm down. One of the factors that we just quite mentioned is the upgrade of Iman and knowledge, education. For learn about Islam. For learn and know, for know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will increase people's their education. I mean, they increase uh, upgrade business in Iman. One of the other factors that we really upgrade people their Iman for Sabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in names and in attributes. We know the Almighty Allah. The one we we'll be to say that they're all seeing, that they're all hearing, and they hear everything. You will be careful of what you talk. Because you say, whenever you talk anything, Almighty Allah also is very clear. It's very clear. Almighty Allah said, God, Sami Allah, Qawla Lati Tuja, Liluka Fi Zawjiha. Somebody can complain a man to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha bin Di at a distance. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received this complaint, Aisha said, Usa in the Nadi Yeri, much of what this woman they talk. Then the verse come up from the sky to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for say, Allah don't Yeri that woman where they complain. Usa in the so, yeah. for understand all the names and the attributes, they help for upgrade the Iman. Because when you know Salah, they hear you, they see you, you will take them for what you do. You go avoid the thing, they win a haram, they do what Allah wants. You always look for the Allah, see you, and the one who pray, you upgrade yourself. You always want the Allah, see you, and the one who fast. You always want the Almighty Allah, see you, and the gathering of dhikr, and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they learn and seek education. You always want for the Allah, see you, and they pull off a charity. You always want the Allah, see you to the good part. So when you appear then suddenly, you iman the upgrade, you know. So, uh, so many things in the way they mention, uh, they among all, all the things in the again for ponder about mental and creations, you know. We ponder about all and creations, all that the help for upgrade the motor money iman. Okay, you need for upgrade your iman, as our doctor don't tell me. Uh, basically, there are two main pillars. You just need for increase on your worship, and at the same time, left the bad. But while you should increase on your worship, you get for search for knowledge, because now the guidance the day. So, doctor, eh, the Iman would agree, say, they rise at the same time they fall. When you worship, you left by the rise. When you do that, they, but which and the other thing, they destroy this Iman? The Iman, it can destroy in two forms. One, it can destroy totally, not in the left panel. And if you see not in the left panel, the Iman, then what in the person be? Become careful. Oh. They got saved from that. Oh. Then, secondly, it can destroy partially, that is, at the reduction. Okay, reduce. All too danger, but the first one is more dangerous. What in the destroy the Iman completely? Now two things. One, kufr. 
Come from another opposite of a man. You disbelieve. You deny God completely. Or you deny so, some of the aspects, of, some of the principles of Islam. If somebody say prayer not compulsory, they're in a kafir. You understand me? If you deny anything there, you become kafir. Then secondly, the shirk. Shirk, the biggest thing will be to say it will destroy the iman. They left nothing for them. Almighty Allah SWT make it very clear to me. He tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he say, Wala in ashrakta, la in ashrakta, la yahbatanna amaluka. He say, if you commit shirk, all you walk is destroy, all things spoil, everything. And the very first part of you walk with the poil that you iman. You know, so we we'll be very, very be careful. Then two things say, and then they destroy the iman totally. The things say, will they destroy the iman partially, and the sins say, will they commit? The ulama they agree for saying, Mortal man, you the believer, you iman, it will reduce any time you commit sin. Any time you commit sin. And the sin they back the day by degree. You get the small sins, you get the big sins. You know? Then small sins, them, if you do them plenty, something they can multiply and go to big sin. We go affect you. The big sin is very, very clear. Like fornication, like for disobedient parents, them, all around the one in a big, big sin, them. For its interest, a big sin, and they are among the ones they wouldn't count as big sins. Then, then one day also, they need total repentance. If anyone upon the way you commit, it they affect you in man drastically. And it can cause for lady person to enter a hellfire. Even though, Ulama would say, you know, they be kafir. As long as you not consider anything in the city halal. If somebody eat it by saying, it is not haram to me, then the person will become kafir. Because you don't deny what God say. But somebody will eat interest, or they commit sin, and no say it bad, but situation overcome me, they commit them. This person, I don't commit sin, but then they become a kafir. Okay, so this kind of people they are, they, they fit, they destroy partially. And the prophets are making very clear to me from the hadith. Them. He say, for example, la yezni zani he ne yezni o mu'min. Say the person they fornicate, that way they fornicate, in not a believer. They don't deny iman, but that iman will deny them unto the total iman. That the partial iman, that the perfect iman, that is, that is you when the comedian here, you iman not perfect, you iman not complete, you iman irreduce. And that reduction is not fine for you, you get to be very, very careful. So, now then, in particular, here, they unbog the iman. You get away unbog and partially, when the sin sin. All the sins will be the commit. Any sin will be to say, no reach the stage of shirk and kufr, and then they uproot the iman completely. But it put the person in a very dangerous position. Because um, um, it possibly the person enters a hellfire, then something they you give for need for lay the prophet and plead for them for lay commodity in the cows, several hadiths, and they will talk about that. Yadukulu mina nar man kan if you call behi is called darati min al iman. That person will get that small drop of iman in your heart. It can help for lay come out inside the hellfire. But you get for good if you be careful. So all of them things in the need to call for lay be very, very be careful. And that make the Quran divides uh, the believers them, the one that move in them into three portions. Then three portions in there, the first one is referred to as the minhum for minhum the one that they wrong themselves. They all the wrong themselves and the first one a believer but they commit sin sin. They do what Allah no want. They refer to them from the Quran for sin and possibly for wrong himself. He said, Wamin Hum Muktasid, the other possibly the moderate. The moderate portion and the possibly they do what Allah want. They avoid all what Allah no want. But in moderate, in order to add, in order to reduce. Okay? In order to keep in five daily prayers. But in order to add pantapan. In order to fast month of Ramadan, in order to add. In order to fast Mondays, in order to fast Thursdays. Then the final one, the best one, and the other one will say, khayrati bi Amongst them three categories there, the one will be to say, they don't take the pace, they don't go before. They are the one will be to say, they do what Allah want, they avoid what Allah no want, but they don't stop there. They add more uh, supplementary worship. Then they fast inside the month of Ramadan and fast also Mondays and Thursdays. Then they avoid all what is haram. Then even the two will not to haram seven, they avoid them. Just for them to go enter and separate, they will be to say haram. They actually fortify themselves completely and do what Allah wants. And then one day they claim the higher ladder for going to the higher stages, then they will all make, it, make effort for do that. Uh, we don't know it in the destroy man and Dr. Don say we say. We get partial destruction and full destruction. And for the full destruction, now we commit the biggest of sins when a shirk. And we deny Islam. That's you iman don't go to zero. Of course the partial destruction them are the sins that we, we can commit. And we don't learn say iman the more we worship and the more they go. And that's what we learn.
So meaning, if you are making Iman the rise, you get to worship more. And at the same time, when you worship more, the bad again now for left. As how you defeat for good before you under, and so you forfeit again for left the evil lamb. But doctor, now salon we day, we can hear your normal talk to Sierra Leoneans. I don't know that's how you he say in the Iman we say then to give when the talk, the belief and the action, mm -hmm. then just take the belief. Now I believe God. So okay. So what okay, you mean to the end? First we develop that kind of belief day. It don't refer itself to a particular sect, what they call the murjia. The murjia, that anybody will be to say, they remove the action from the iman. They call people and can talk. If they do the wrong thing, we ask, I say, well, left me as long as my heart clean. You know, me own faith in my heart today. If, if that faith will not your heart, you know, we will not show that your action will not make you a believer at all. You will only be a believer, we be to say, you perform you know, the action itself. The action is very, very important. So if you remove the action from the iman, from the faith, then you don't categorize yourself by their sect, what they call murjia. And the murjia, and the one they be to say, they not accept, say, the action a part of Iman. Then say, um, ordinary belief in the heart. If you have a Sabi God, mean a believer. And so they say, a Sabi God, mean a believer. You don't mm -hmm. know. So, of course, that particular faith, they are wrong totally. And even um, uh, Iblis, uh, Shaitan, is a big God. So if we talk that word, the Shaitan self is a believer. So definitely not to correct, uh, not correct at all. So therefore, the iman, uh, the way would be to say, it be word, not the, not the mouth, belief, not the heart, and action with the body. Okay. And so the Sierra Leoneans, then we get to this and their mouth, say, them believe, them believe, but they need to do it in and for do. This now one into one at least. When you believe, not to just the talk, you get to do the action also. So, doctor, we go can dive that small because this is not a man. But since we don't get you now, and I know how it's been difficult to get you now, we go can touch on something just brief. And we know by Sunday, inshallah, yes, we hear they say Valentine, Valentine, we hear about that. And Salon, it's very obvious, we get not less than 70% Muslims. So, if anything, any celebration, in any jubilation so far, the rise now yeah, again for affect the Muslims there. Yeah. So we no need for keep quiet. Like this Valentine with the and Valentine, Valentine. We don't know if he attached to Islam or any other thing. I tell you plenty thank you, Brother Mujtaba, for asking me this question. Um, I want to make a categorically clear for say for celebrate Valentine, for celebrate any day on the calendar of the year. We not to Islam tell you for celebrate him. Is wrong totally. We Muslims will get only two celebrations. When I recognize celebrations, them we get evidence, we support them. When I only then two celebrations, so we get we will do the Eid al Adha and the Eid al Fitr. The two predate them. The one after the Ramadan and the one after the Hajj. Now only in two years so we get anybody we get is a day in life for it is celebrate once inside the year. That one they didn't accept um, from um, us in Muslim. Now coming to the issue of the Valentine itself, when we check the history of Valentine, we found out for saying that some two way, it get a very evil root cause. Root cause where it come from is just too bad. The mention say uh, during the times of uh, the Roman people then, we uh, the Romans them and people then we have been idol worshippers them. They may get a particular kin where they call Claudius uh, the second. In the year 270, Claudius the second can find out for say, most of the married men, they need to perform well, we then go for go fit, not the war. And then the war been plenty. And the state they need plenty young men, they will go fit. So post we married, again, family where they consider, they member in wife. So definitely this person will perform fine if, if, if you go. In fact, most of them can get letters, you know, you want to go. So this man may get for ban, for the time marriage system, then say nene, a banner. But what thing can happen? This um, a pastor or reverend or priest or who whatsoever who didn't say nene, him wouldn't and I didn't get his name Valentine. Him being doing one secretly until one day they didn't get for know about him. When they know about him, of course the the king therefore made an arrest him and put him in a cell. The history they tell me for say inside the cell he meet to a lady day. This lady been sick. He get for help and take it well. But he can't fall in love with this lady. Later on, when they pull this man now for go behead him, for go, for go kill him, for sake of the deny way, deny the king, now he sent a special paper to this lady, so 
Paul tell him about this particular day. He tell him, say, this letter, they come to you from Valentine. So now from there now the people and take this for the get a habit for send to a person where you like a particular card. They call them Valentine. Coming to um, um, after that, several years them inside Europe, the history again they tell you for say plenty of young men them in different different towns and get a habit whenever February 14 reach or the 15th of February, they may get a habit for the collect in names of all the young girls, them put down all in one box and call all the young boys them for can choose. Anybody who you choose, the name who you choose, that one then will be your girlfriend for that year day. Then, before that, before you be your girlfriend now, you get for write to them. You just send to them a card. And then tell you because they're Romans and they wouldn't believe uh, for worship idols, they mean they write the name of the God within the worship. For send them to the to the lady then will be to say then 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 they be the women them or the girlfriend them for that year day. I say you go continue then go day tell the next year back then they do the same thing. Now the Christians them come try for make effort for the young man they also for change that attitude uh, idea they plan them for pull them come up and idol worship them bring them to Christianity. Now then can change now that particular I mean God deal with them in the right to Valentine. They return back what the Valentine man been do to the lady we be meet with inside cell. Mm -hmm. So from then then they continue to celebrate this particular thing we then call Valentine's Day. But clearly the Muslim scholars and talk about them and then condemn mm -hmm. them outrightly and say you not allow for anybody engage by such kind of a practice. Especially we them parties around the world where everybody free to do what you for do, we they see what in happen. How people in the how they encourage young girls them for do bad things them. How they distribute condoms to young girls them for them go to whatever they want this particular day. All of them teachers, so we as religious people, need for condemn them outrightly. We need for warn and caution the Muslims them that they not for involve in such kind of a thing. That anybody involved in them, then you don't involve in something in roots now idol worshiping. We in root not to Islam and not get no base inside Islam, then of course not part of what it be to say haram completely, where they lead to fornication, where they lead to things they be to say, no religion no they will accept them at all. So let me get a very, very clear saying that the position this way Islam gets towards this particular Valentine we will celebrate. Okay, that's now Dr. Ahmad Ramadan Jallo. You don't clearly tell you say Islam no recognize anything when a Valentine. Islam no recognize them. So anybody where they do that in the name of Islam is very wrong. Any Muslim where they join in doing this again, it's very wrong in other parts of Islam. So we for try best and avoid that in other parts of way. So inshallah, time no enough, but we will try for round up now. Doctor, in 30 seconds, we got time no left, in 30 seconds, so this issue of abortion is still the goal. In 30 seconds, which you go for saying now? Well, honestly, this is one of the things then we be to say they touch uh, any sober minded somebody heart. Not talking about somebody who is a religious person, we know outrightly how religion comes for can save guide the life of modern man. <coughs> religion, <coughs> Islam come for can save guide five things. They call it the Rodiat al Khams. The first one is the deen itself. The second one is the life. Life very, very important to, 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 to inside Islam. And then make make them very clear as well to Maida. You see, he said, Woman Ahia Hafaka and Lama Ahia Nasa Jamia. He said, Anybody will give life, will contribute for give life, then will reward them as if they don't give life to all mankind. So anybody will take one green life, then will judge them as if you don't take the life of all mankind. The concept of abortion is very, very clear. I saw the feeling why the people in the talk here, talk yonder, in the talk what they want, people in the claim saying they represent Muslims, then they talk for certain debates them for say exceptional cases and they or this or that. I want to make it very clear that the Muslim position for abortion, any kind of abortion, is haram completely. Now for kill more money life. And it totally haram, totally haram. Allah say, "Wala taqtulu nafs alati haram Allahu illa bil haq." No, take that soul where Allah don't make sacred, except upon the truth, except you get justice for do that. Okay. Except, so the Muslim position is that abortion is totally haram. Anyhow they want for them, anyhow they want for talk them, they not correct at all inside Islam. Now for take the lives of people them, and for destroy the generation who yet unborn. We in a criminal act that one day in the sight of Islam. That's now Dr. Ahmad Jallo. And you don't treat for you so many things. We don't treat a man, we don't pass for Valentine, and we don't kind of abortion. 
Abortion, Islam no Sabian, Islam no Tolagate, and in any form. A doctor don't tell you, and I very qualified doctor we study for 18 good years, so anything is given, I fact. So we will carry this program to you, and I will talk about it. We meet again any other time. We will say, Subhanakallah, and 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 we will say,